All right, welcome back to the second video. For this video, we're going to complete each table and graph the function. Then we're going to identify the constant ratio and the y-intercept. So let's start off with our first equation, which is f of x is equal to 3 to the power of x. We're going to fill in the t-table by plugging in each of these x values into the equation where the x is. So our first x value is negative 2. So we're going to have 3 to the power of negative 2. So like I said earlier, every whole number is a fraction. So technically, this is 3 over 1 to the power of negative 2. To get rid of the negative exponent, what you have to do is flip your fraction around. So now it's 1 over 3 instead of 3 over 1. And this will be raised to the power of 2. No longer negative 2, because you just use the negative to flip the fraction. From here, we can just square the top and the bottom. So 1 squared is 1. And then 3 squared is 9. So your final answer is 1 9. Let's do the same process for when x is negative 1. So we have 3 to the power of negative 1 according to our equation right over there. Remember, where your x is, you must replace it with negative 1 because that is your x value right now. So since we have a negative exponent, I want you to treat the number 3 as a fraction of 3 over 1. Then you can flip it to become 1 over 3. That takes care of the negative. So now you have 1 over 3 to the power of 1. Anything to the power of 1 is itself. So for this box, we have 1 third as our final answer. For the next box, we're going to plug in 0 into our equation. So we have 3 to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is going to be 1. We went over that last time, and so I'm going to say it again. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. 10 million to the power of 0 would also be 1. 3 billion to the power of 0 would also be 1. Let's take a look at the next one. x is equal to 1, so we have 3 to the power of 1, which gives us 3. Remember, anything to the power of 1 is itself. Last but not least, we have 2, so 3 to the power of 2, and this is going to give us 9. 3 squared is 9. From here, we can plot it onto our graph. So our first point is negative 2, 1 9. So negative 2, 1 9 is going to be somewhere around there. You don't have to be so exact. I know it's hard to plot 1 9 as a fraction onto our graph. Next point is negative 1, 1 3rd. So I'm going to plot that right over there. Negative 1, comma, 1 third. Next is 0, comma, 1. Next is 1, comma, 3. And then last but not least is 2, comma, 9. And we can connect all these points with a curvy line, not a straight line because this would not make a straight line. Exponential graphs have a curvy line. Okay, so notice that your graph should not pass down below. Like, this is wrong. You don't want this. Your graph should stay above the x-axis like this because your x-axis is your horizontal asymptote. Remember that we have a horizontal asymptote in our, uh, in our graph. And that horizontal asymptote is this line right over here that you get closer and closer to, but you'll never touch. And that line happens to have the equation of y is equal to 0 because it's at a height of 0. So let me rewrite this equation. f of x is equal to 3 to the power of x. Well, I can rewrite this as f of x is equal to 1 times 3 to the power of x. If I multiply it by 1, I'm not changing anything. I can also say plus 0 at the end because I haven't changed anything. I can multiply something by one and it will stay the same. I can add nothing, literally add zero to something and it will still stay the same. And so the reason I do this is because this formula will help us see our uh, constant ratio, our y-intercept and our asymptote. So let's start off with our constant ratio, which I think I did in what color? Purple. So I will do constant ratio in purple. So the constant ratio is what you multiply by every single time to get your next number. And that is the base of your exponent. So it's going to be 3. Take a look over here. If you take 1 ninth and multiply by 3, you will get 1 third. If you multiply by 3 again, you will get 1. If you multiply by 3 again, 1 times 3 is 3. And 3 times 3 is 9. So this 
common ratio or constant ratio, same thing, is going to be three. And you can use the letter R to represent the constant ratio. So R is equal to three. And once again, you can see that right over here in our equation. Let's take a look at our y-intercept. So on the y-intercept, you can just take a look on the graph and you will see right over there, it is 0, 0,1. You can also find that on your t-table as the number next to the 0. When your x is 0, your y is 1. So your y-intercept is 0, 0,1. And how can you find that in your equation? It's actually this number. So this number in the front will be your y-intercept. The number that is the base, this will be your common ratio or constant ratio, same thing. Common ratio, constant ratio, same thing. Also known as the letter R. And finally, this zero at the end is going to tell you your asymptote. Specifically, your horizontal asymptote. And the equation for that would be y is equal to zero. That's why it's a plus zero at the end. So if you feel up for it, you can try number four on your own. And if not, it's OK, because we are about to go over it together. So let's take a look at number four. Oh, before we do number four, actually, let me give you more examples with this equation and this equation. Let's see if you can figure out the y-intercept and the common ratio for each of those. So let's see, for the first one, your y-intercept would be this number. And your constant ratio, I'll just use the letter R, will be this number. And then for the second one, you will have a y-intercept over here. And you will have a common ratio of 3. So just letting you know, whenever you see numbers in this format, you know that the y-intercept is the number in the front. And the ratio will be the, the base of your exponent. All right, now let's try number four. So number four is one half to the power of x. Let's start off by plugging in negative two as our x value. So one half to the power of negative two. So once again, when you have a negative, I want you to flip the fraction. So instead of one over two, it's now two over one. And then that takes care of the negative. <clears throat> now our exponent is a positive two. So now we have 2 over 1 to the power of positive 2. And then this is um, 2 over 1 is simply 2. So we have 2 squared, which gives us 4. <clears throat> Let's try again for the next point. 1 half to the power of negative 1. Flip the fraction. 2 over 1 to the power of 1. And then this is 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. Remember that 2 over 1 is just equal to 2. That's why I simplified it from there to there. 2 divided by 1 is 2. That's why I wrote it as 2 to the power of 1. And anything to the power of 1 is itself. So 2 to the power of 1 is 2. All right, next one. 1 half to the power of 0. So anything to the power of 0 is 1. We've already went over that. You can type it in your calculator if you don't believe me. Next one is 1. So we're going to plug in 1 half to the power of 1. Anything to the power of 1 is itself. Last but not least, 1 half to the power of 2. So to get this one, we just need to raise everything to the power of 2. So on the top, we have a 1 squared. What is 1 squared? Still 1. On the bottom, we have a 2. So what is 2 squared? 2 squared will give us 4. So your final answer for this one is 1 fourth. Now, time to plot everything from your t-table onto the graph. Our first point is negative 2, comma, 4. So negative 2, comma, 4 is right over here. Then we have negative 1, comma, 2. Negative 1, comma, 2. Then we have 0, comma, 1. 1, comma, 1 half. And 2, comma, 1 fourth. From here, we can connect everything with a curvy line. All right, let me rewrite our equation up top. One times one half 
to the power of x plus 0. That does not look like a 0. There we go, plus 0. All right. So now let's find our constant ratio and our y-intercept. So constant ratio. Remember, the constant ratio is the base. So it's going to be 1 half. And take a look at your t-table. 4 times 1 half will give you 2. 2 times 1 half will give you 1. 1 times 1 half will give you 2. And sorry, not 2. 1 times 1 half will give you 1 half. And 1 half times 1 half will give you 1 fourth. So every single time you go down your t-table, you are multiplying by 1 half. And then let's take a look at our y-intercept. y-intercept is right over here. So it's still 0, 1. And then how do you see that on your equation? It's this number, the number that's being multiplied in front. I know we don't see it here, but when you don't see it there, that means there's a 1, is an invisible 1 being multiplied. OK, so our y-intercept is 0, 1. And then last but not least, what is our asymptote? Let me draw it in on the graph. Here is our asymptote. This is the line that we are getting closer and closer to, but we will not touch it. It has a height of zero. How do you see that in your equation? Right there. It is the plus zero at the end. All right, so that is it for this video. Um, I just want to briefly give you a glance at the homework portion or the individual practice. You're only doing the even numbers, OK? So we've crossed out the odd ones for you. See, crossed it out. So if it's crossed out, you don't have to do it. If it's not crossed out, you got to do it, OK? I think you can figure that out on your own. All right, so let me know if you have a question, and I will come over and help you out.